when I was a kid growing up in Glasgow, coming to Mammoth Cave National Park on the Memorial Day weekend, and Fourth of July was just standard. So we'd, we'd, we'd load up in my dad's uh, 49 sheet when we'd go to Mammoth Cave. Well, we would ride up that dirt road, which was dirt thin up Flint Ridge, and, and we'd go down Great Aunt's Gate, and we would sit there in, in Daddy's car. And I was a little kid, and I didn't understand why we were up here in a hot day in that lane, sitting in the car, and Daddy wouldn't say a word, but my mother would say, well, boys, just, just sit there and be quiet. Your daddy's come home for a minute. But see, what my daddy was doing, he was walking down memory lane. I didn't understand how, how important it was for him to go up there and just look and remember, run up and down the lane barefooted, being baptized, and going to Mammoth Cave Baptist Church, and then we would uh, go back over to the hotel after the, we'd go to the picnic area and have a picnic. Then we'd go to the motel and some of those people, uh, those Caucasian folks uh, who worked in the hotel kitchen knew my daddy. But see, they were Mammoth Cave people. And really in 1957, the takeover hadn't been that long, you know. So we'd go to the door to get an ice cream cone and I told Joy Lyons, this is in Joy's book. And she said, well, how you doing, David? A uh, Caucasian lady, she said, well, he'd say, well, Miss Millie, we're doing fine. We, I brought my wife and my boys uh, to Mammoth Cave for a picnic. And we would like some ice cream cones and things like that. And she said, well, David, how many do you need? He said, well, Miss Millie, I need, uh, I need four for the boys and I need a Coke for my wife and me. She said, well, you know, you have to go to the back door. And, you know, and, and I, 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 I remember the pain in my daddy's face, but you know, he never said a word. So we'd go to the back door and they would bring out refreshments and we'd go back over to the picnic area. And dad said, oh, my mama said, this is a national park and we ought to be able to go inside we want to. And daddy said, now just, they said, that's just the way things are, you know. And then after we would finish up our picnic, we would go down to the historic entrance. It used to be a parking lot down there where you could park your car and picnic table. All different now. So we sat there in front of the cave entrance and seen these guides come up, you know, National Park uniform. And I remember being a little kid, I was about half scared, you know, badge and everything. And, and uh, Daddy would be telling us our story and they never knew who we were. Now, maybe one guy come through named Shorty Coates. I mean, Dad say, how you do, Shorty? Because Shorty Coates was one of those people that was there when Daddy was growing up over there. But most of the other guides were were uh, new people, people my dad didn't know. So they never acknowledged our presence. But I remember thinking as a little kid, well, my, my, my kinfolk had to do with this cave, too. But they never knew who we were. And my daddy said, I just want to make sure that you all know what I'm telling you because I wouldn't want it to go away. He said, because they told me that um, the Brasfords who was here were calling to the office and they was told that you need to be looking around for another job because you're not going to be grandfathered. So my whole message is I remember being a little kid but I was offended that it seemed like what my kin did didn't really seem to matter and nobody seemed to be interested in who we were. But now there's a rebirth. Now I get to tell you who we are. 